Hello everyone, this is episode 2 of Farah's Carrier Guide. If you haven't seen episode 1 yet, perhaps we should go back and look at that. That was a episode briefly outlining the format of this carrier guide and general CV information. Today's episode, uh, episode 2, we're going to be covering commander skills. There's elements such as skill breakdowns, the do's and don'ts, what you pick with regards to aircraft carriers, um, certain skills, uh, more of a kind of in-depth uh, things you might not be aware of. Uh, we'll cover some build templates and different point setups and the trade-offs between picking one skill over another. Shouldn't be too much of a long video, uh, but come along for the ride with me and we'll talk about, at least in my opinion, um, the commander skills currently as of version 6.4. So here we are in the EU client on my Taiho. I'm going to have a look at my captain here. Now there's a current build setup, but uh, ultimately we're going to have a look. Actually, I think I'll pick a captain that hasn't actually been got any points yet. Let's have a look for that German one I've got. Here we go, a nice, a nice blank empty captain. There we go. So we're going to look at the captain skills here, just on an empty captain, just for what you, what you might expect. First things first. Uh, the I feel 11 points is probably the, the basic minimum for an aircraft carrier and we'll go into that in detail. So let's go over the skills in general and we'll have a look at what we want. First of all, priority target. What does it mean? Well, it means that not only when you're detected you have the you know, little apostrophe, sorry, not apostrophe, uh, exclamation point. Um, it'll also show you how many people are looking at you with their targeted reticle. It's a somewhat helpful skill. Usually for the cruisers, it's a, it's a priority skill that you have to always have to take. As an aircraft carrier, it's not really that important. We might come back to it though. Preventative maintenance, we're an aircraft carrier. We don't really don't need this. That's not important. Expert loader, minus 50% reloading time to the shells. Well, again, that doesn't affect us. Aircraft servicing expert, this is where it gets interesting. This is actually quite important. The skills we're going to be looking at today are the ones that have a statistical improvement on your planes. There are a number of skills that improve the capability of your carrier, but we want to improve your planes so that your fighters can fight harder and longer, your scouting planes can scout longer, you can take off quicker, you can b be more effective at bombing, and this aircraft serving skill expert is perfect because it gives us 5% HP to carrier-based aircraft, that's great, so everything all of a sudden has a big buff. And minus 10% to the servicing time of carrier-based aircraft, so things load faster for the takeoff. For one point, this is like the skill to take. It's perfect, right? Direction center for cable aircraft. This is a battleship or a cruiser skill. Nothing to do with aircraft carriers. Dogfighting expert. Well, now this is actually quite interesting because... In meaningful terms, it increases the damage um, per second of fighters for each tier of difference. So that means that if you, in your Hiryu, as the tier 7 Japanese aircraft carrier, are fighting against an American tier 7 ship known as the Saipan that uses tier 9 fighter planes, you will get a 20% damage increase bonus to your fighters if you have the dogfighting skill. Another advantage is there are numerous ships that may be tier 7 or tier 8, but have higher tier scout planes, this dogfighting skill will help. Now, the other benefit is, even if you're fighting equal tiers, is the plus 10% to fighter ammunition. This is a very important 10%. It's a very good skill to have. Fighter ammunition is the fuel for strafing, the alt attack for fighters. You want to be able to strafe or exit strafe, which we'll talk about later, um, as much as possible, uh, because it's the most efficient way to do damage without taking damage to your planes. So dogfighting is also an incredibly effective and valuable one-point skill. Incoming fire alert tells us when, you know, we've already been shot at. It's not really that helpful considering how carriers can turn really sluggishly, so we're not interested in the skill because it's kind of pointless. And lastly, we have evasive maneuver. Now, this is a skill of some contention because it was a recently introduced one in the 6.0 patch notes. Ultimately, what it does is, while your planes have bombs, 
and are flying out, um, you know, they behave as uh, normal. Um, yeah, so your, ca your, your planes behave as normal um, when they're just flying with their bomb load. However, once the planes have dropped their bomb load on an attack, the planes themselves become less detectable. So it's minus 20% detectability of the strike craft. They get more health, so it's plus 75% of health to the strike craft. However, their airspeed is reduced by 30%. So there's two buffs. They're harder to see. They have more health, but their plane speed is reduced. Now, let's talk about the skill in a little bit of detail, sir. This used to be a skill that could be abused because, under my best of my knowledge, what you could do is you could fly your planes out to the target, you could hit the F button to tell your planes to return to your aircraft carrier, and that means they get a health bonus, a detectability bonus, and then if the return path of the planes would fly over an enemy ship, they would receive those bonuses, and then you could immediately regain control of the planes, and rather than telling it to fly back to the carrier, and then attack your target, maybe it's a battleship, and then you know, and then you would you would basically get you're getting the benefits without none of the downsides, which is the speed reduction. Yeah, the plane speed reduction means they're inside the enemy AAM vault for longer, so it's a kind of a trade off. Do you really value the extra health, or because the slower the planes go, that easy it is for the enemy ship to do, kind of avoid. However, that's been fixed now because now it only works when the bomb load has been dropped and then they're on the return to the carrier. Uh, if you told the planes to return but they still had their bomb load, they didn't get the benefits of evasive maneuvers. Uh, I would need to retest that, but I think that's something they did to fix it to stop people kind of abusing it. Ultimately, though. Regardless of what I just said is true or not, which I believe it is, but the point I'm trying to get at here is that there are a lot of downsides to this skill. If the planes go at 30% speed, that means they take a long time to get back to your carrier for you to prepare a second wave. So you have to then super micro the skill to tell planes to fly next to your carrier and then tell them to land when they get to your carrier or shift click you know, F to so that they fly next to your carrier then land. However, when you tell them to land, then they go back to their slow mode again because you're not telling them to fly at maximum speed. You're, you're on the they only get the nerf to speed on the actual return to the carrier. So the actual landing time when the plane t rotates behind the carrier, then slows down, then comes to land, it takes forever. I guess what I'm trying to say is never pick evasive maneuvers. It is a bad skill. It used to be a skill with extremely high skill ceiling. You could abuse it, but right now it's just bad. Don't pick it. If anyone uses that, it's just terrible. There are other builds that you can go with. There's no free points for evasive maneuver. Don't take the skill. Am I clear yet? Don't take it. Okay. We there, There's another video where I made in the past on my YouTube channel talking about evasive maneuvers and how it could be abused, but they changed the mechanics of it. So now I believe that when you are on the return with a bomb load and you're trying to abuse it, it doesn't get the benefits. So don't take the skill. Moving on to the two point stuff. There's only realistically one skill we want, which is a torpedo acceleration. We'll go over this more quickly now. High alert increases the reload time of damage control party. As a carrier, we don't really want to be taking damage, we're not that interested. Jack of all trades is a 5% uh, loading time of consumables. Again, at higher tiers, that affects your repair party, also, well, your damage control party, I should say, and also affects your defensive fire, but we're not interested. We don't have turrets, we don't have a smoke screen. Theoretically speaking, we could increase the DPS of our rear gunners of our bombers, but we're not really that interested because most people strafe these days, so it's irrelevant. We're going to get no benefit from Adrenaline Rush. Our second, By the time we take low, low health and we have to rely on our secondary, something's gone seriously wrong. And again, we don't need last time because we're not expecting to take damage on our ship. So the only realistic skill we need is the Torpedo Acceleration. Now, what does this do? Well, your torpedoes are, I believe, 34 knots for American and 35 knots for Japanese, or much the other way around. But the point is, by default, that's quite slow. If you compare them to destroyers, destroyers can be quite fast, going up to 40 knots. So the, if you're trying to drop a uh, any ship, but primarily destroyers, you need torpedo acceleration. We don't care about the torpedo range. We care about bumping up five knots. Now, to a destroyer, five knots isn't a great deal. If a, if a destroyer's got torpedoes of 50 knots or 67 knots, adding five knot speed for a 20% reduction range is quite harmful for destroyer. But for us, the aircraft carrier, Torpedo acceleration is a must-take skill if you're going to use torpedo bombers. It is incredibly powerful in terms of its ability to cross-drop even the fastest of destroyers. Like Russian ones that are really quick because then you have to kind of drop in advance of them. Now some other people might say you don't need torpedo acceleration, go with something else. 
I say because of the dearth of options at tier two, I'm not going to take expert rear gunner for the perceived benefit that I get out of it. I'm going to take the torpedo arc acceleration because it makes it so much easier to hit maneuverable cruisers like the British line, very maneuverable destroyers, which you want to kill because they're dangerous, especially ones that you know, evade the enemy battle line and come straight for you. Uh, you need to be good at uh, cross-dropping, and torpedo acceleration helps immensely. Uh, so take the skill. That is only my advice. Right, moving into the three-point bracket. We don't want basic survivability because, yes, it's nice that we reduce the time to repair and for firing and flooding and that type of stuff, but honestly, by the time your carrier's taking damage, something's gone seriously wrong. We don't want to be boosting up skills t for you to tank damage. We want to be boosting up skills that increase your capability to do damage or, you know, to have more effective planes. Um, expert survivability? Again, why do you want more health? You don't want to be hit in the first place. So let's be serious here, we're not taking that skill. Torpedo arm and expertise? Well, this is interesting because... Ignoring the 10% reload time to torpedo tubes, which we don't have, the minus 20% time to service torpedo bombers is actually really good. American torpedo bombers take a long time to prepare. Japanese torpedo bombers don't take as long, but when we get to the tier 9 and 10 bracket, all of a sudden we have three waves. This is actually a pretty good skill. Now you can argue there may be another three-point skill to take, known as basic fire training, which we'll come to in two seconds, but this is a key contender for the three-point skill that we want. Should also be noted, in case anyone's like playing this from the beginning, you have to take a one-point to get a two-point, to get a three-point, to get a four-point. You can't just go obviously straight into a four-point skill, you have to work your way up the train, so you need to pick at least one, 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 two, one, three, so you can get into the four points uh, skills. Torpedo armament expertise is a pretty good one. Now, Another newly added skill in 6.0 is Emergency Takeoff, which allows you to launch and recover aircraft while you're on fire. And let me ask you this question, why are you on fire? Are you being shot at? Have you got yourself in a bad position? The point I'm trying to get at here is that you need to be mindful of where your ship is. I know it's not always possible to do things, but what is, how many times are you going to be in a situation where when you're on fire, it's pretty much game over already. Now, yes, the enemy carrier could be kind of bombing you and doing fire and that type of stuff. But let's be clear here. Plus 100% time to servicing aircraft when the carrier's on fire. So the t time to... So that's a nerf in that if you didn't have the skill and you're on fire, you're still preparing the planes really quickly. Or when you are on fire, yes, you can take off those fighters or whatnot, but normally you would wait till your fighters are ready, then hit the repair, then have the fighters take off or whatnot. The point is, this skill is not worth three points. It's not worth taking. I see some people who take it and it's laughable because it's, it's clear. If you're in a stage where you're on fire and you're going to be on fire again, because let's say you use your damage control party to put the fire out and there's follow-up fires, you're kind of screwed. You know, you're going to have to let the first fire burn out naturally and then assuming you don't die from it, and then you're going to uh, wait for the second dive bomber to cause fire to you or some ship to burn to you and then, you know, use the damage control party then. Or alternatively, if a destroyer is chasing you and you will, you wait till your torpedo bombers are ready or whatever offensive capability you have is ready, uh, if you're on fire, then put the, the, the damage control party, then take off the planes, which will take off even if you get some fresh fire immediately, as long as you're in the process of taking off the takeoff, and then go attack the target. Emergency takeoff is a reactionary skill that I don't like. I'd rather have um, positive skills that affect the planes or offensive capability or keeping things from damage you. This is a skill that affects you after you take damage. I don't like those type of skills. I don't take emergency takeoff. This is my personal preference. Don't take the skill. I don't like it. It's bad. All right. Here is basic fire training. We spoke about this briefly uh, a few seconds ago. Basic fire training is a skill taken by many ships for many reasons. Uh, it increases the uh, main battery up to 139mm, but it affects all secondaries. So as an aircraft carrier, hey, for secondary builds, it's hilarious. The reason you might want to take it, though, as an aircraft carrier, as your three-point skill, is the 20% damage increase uh, per second of AA. So, you know, you've got a 20% increase to your AA all round. That's pretty good. And as an aircraft carrier up to tier 7, you don't have a defensive fire to panic um, incoming bombers. So you're susceptible to uh, carrier strikes or sniping, as it's known, and being killed. So if you want to increase your AA, assuming your ship has good AA, that's actually a pretty interesting skill to take. And we'll come back to this later with some captain builds. But this is another option for three points. 
Superintendent, well, in this particular instance, Superintendent is useless because it increases uh, consumable charges. As an aircraft carrier, you only have a defensive fire, but the cooldown of the defensive fire is so long, Superintendent isn't worth the three points on an aircraft carrier. Demolition Expert, likewise, increases the chance to cause fire by a bomb, but let's be clear here, dive bombers have an exceptionally high chance to trigger a fire. Plus, there are signals, which you can put on the exterior ship, which we'll cover in a later episode, which can increase the fire chance, so it's not worth the three points to take Demolition Expert. Vigilance, again, it's the acquisition range of torpedoes, and as far as I can tell, it's only from your ship. You've got planes to spot torpedoes. Why are you taking visits on an aircraft carrier? Things are going wrong if you're doing that. Don't take that. Uh, finally, into the four bracket. We have manual fire control for secondary armament. Unless you're like a Hikuri who wants to go have some fun, don't take this skill. <laughs> it's really stupid. It has no real benefit. You don't want to take your carrier close to the enemy so that your secondaries can open fire. Yes, it might be hilarious on the new Kaga that's got nice big secondary guns. Yes, it might be hilarious on a ship like the uh, Hikuri that has really good secondary guns. But you, legitimately speaking, you don't take this skill. Fire prevention, again, what's going wrong? Why are you taking fires in the first place? Don't take this as a reactionary skill. Take, take more progressive thinking. Don't take this skill, it's kind of bad. You're not going to use uh, inertia fuse for HE shells because you're just basically not going to use that. Uh, you don't have main guns, you're relying on secondaries to do that. It's really stupid. This is the most important four point skill for an aircraft car, air supremacy. It gives you plus one fighter, plus one dive bomber. Not torpedo bomber because they realize torpedo bombers are really dangerous. That is huge. I cannot stress how huge this is. A 10 point captain basically means you get 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, that's 6, and then 1 4 takes up to 10. This has got to be the first four point skill that you take. The, the difference between a Japanese fighter wave at tier 7 that has five planes because of this skill and a Japanese um, tier 7 fighter plane with four planes is huge. It's not a case that a wave of five will beat a wave of four and have one plane left over. It's not a one for one trade. No, it's a snowballing effect. Because of the statistical likelihood and the dice rolls and the effects of how fighter dueling works, you will kill off uh, more than likely one of the enemy fighter planes. So then it's five versus three. And he might kill off one of yours, but ultimately, if it's five versus four, you'll find that the, without strafing and just clicking, you will have three or four, usually three planes left over and his wave will be dead. So you are ahead quite significantly in terms of killing off his wave and you actually have quite a number of planes left over. And if you're playing a long grueling game, if you kill off all his planes and you still have at least one full wave of fighters left over because you know you were being more efficient because you had five waves, you know, five plane in your waves to his four, you now have map control. You can deny bombers, you can do scouting, that type of stuff. So air supremacy is immensely powerful and very important. The plus one dive bomber is very nice. If you use the dive bombers in a scouting role, it's very effective. Uh, having an extra plane is also useful because it means you can take more damage from, you know, anti-air. You can stay out there longer, that type of thing. Alternatively, it's nice to have an extra dive bomb. It increases your statistical likelihood of getting a hit or getting a fire. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the next skill along is advanced fire training. This is an interesting skill insofar as we don't really care about the main battery guns up to 139mm and we don't really care about increasing the range of our secondary guns. We are very interested, however, increasing the 20% range to our AA guns. This will push all of our guns, light, uh, medium, heavy, up to 20%. It means we start engaging um, planes further away. It's a very interesting skill. We can look at that. Uh, usually you wouldn't pick that early. You would want to get the plane boosting uh, skills first, but something we might take later depending on the ship that you're playing on. And then following on from that, we have manual fire control for AA armament. This is an area interesting skill because... If you have a ship that has a caliber of anti-air gun that is above 85 millimeters, it, and then you click on the plane, so that's control left click on the plane, you get a 100% damage increase for that gun, or for, for any gun that's over 85 millimeters. So if you have, in this particular instance, let's go have a look at the... Uh, Kiryu. We can see that. The Hercurius AA defense, it has 100mm guns, this means it's larger than 85mm, the 40 mm won't do anything, we have 12 times 2 that means this theoretical 329 DPS is going to double because it's plus 100%. So this, this thing, it's a, it's a huge damage increase and it synergizes really well with the basic fire training because the basic fire training increases the standard DPS of the AA guns anyway. 
there are two more skills uh, that we want to cover. One is radio location. Uh, doesn't work if you play with an aircraft carrier, you'd be a fool to take it. Um, it's a really good skill for finding people. It's kind of like a wall hack. Think of it what you will, but you don't use it as an aircraft carrier. And concealment expert is another one. Now, concealment expert has the biggest benefit to aircraft carriers at 16%. It can be very good as a, a midway because the midway's uh, base concealment is astronomically huge at like 16 or 17 kilometers. With all the modifiers on the ship and on the captain, you can get it down to 13.9. So it's actually quite reasonable if you take concealment expert. There are trade-offs, however, on build setups uh, because again, as a captain, you only have 19 points for a captain. So that has the basic skill breakdown. Let us now have a little talk about uh, some ideas, some builds. Now, if you're interested in doing some builds, there's a fantastic tool um, on the ship, shipcomrade.com, uh, specifically shipcomrade.com forward slash captain calculator. So this is a fantastic calculator to, you know, to figure out uh, what kind of builds you might want to do. So, for example, we really like aircraft surfacing expert, so we went with that. We like torpedo armor acceleration. We're going to use torpedoes, so we go with torpedo armor and expertise, and then we'll go with air supremacy. That is a 10 point captain. However, if you want to truly be effective, because you can be in the up to tier 8, so from basically tier 4 to tier 7, you can get mirror match, so you can have two, you can have two carriers in a game, so which means you can come across a higher tier carrier or you can come with higher tier planes in general, dogfighting is fantastic, especially as the hero, because you can come across the Saipan with higher tier planes. So you want dogfighting to give yourself an advantage. And if you're the tier 8, 9, or 10, you just want the extra ammunition to begin with. It's really effective. So the basic carrier captain build is this 11 points that we're showing right now. You, you, the 11 points, which isn't too expensive in terms of captain uh, experience, is the standard carrier build. I used this build for ranked gameplay on the US servers with my Hiryu, and it did fantastically well. It was, it was it, in terms of capability of your planes, it is as good as it gets. You know, you, you don't really need to do anything else. Now, there are a few other ways to play in terms of what do I pick next? Well, I'll show you for competitive type play or just self-defense. So for example, if you're a hero, you don't have a defensive fire. My captain here, we can see that I have taken the standard 11 skills, surfacing expert, torpedo um, acceleration. I have not interestingly enough taken torpedo armor and expertise because I feel that I don't need the quicker loading time for the torpedo bombers. I would like the skill, but I can't afford it because I've taken basic fire training instead. And then I've also taken air supremacy I've taken dogfighting expert, and then the remaining skills, I've taken the key trio of self-defense with AA. I've taken the basic fire training to bump up the damage of my ship. I've taken advanced fire training to increase the range of the guns on my ship. And then I've created manual fire control for AA armament to increase the guns that are over 85 millimeters. So what I've done is I've increased the damage of the long range guns, I've increased the range of the AA guns, and I've given them ability to do double damage when I focus on a plane. Also, another thing you can do, just out of curiosity, is you can go into signals and you can take the the signal here, which increases the AA armament another 10%. I've currently got it in farm mode, but if we take that off and put that signal on, let's play you're playing seriously. Then... Hello. Come on, UI. We can see that the AA bumps up a little bit more. Every little helps. This hear you setup is the hear you setup I used when I played ranked. When I played ranked, uh, I used this setup and it's very effective because without a defensive fire, theoretically speaking, you are vulnerable because the enemy, your team might be together, might have defensive fires, your team might be playing as a, as a ball. Uh, so it's very difficult to get your planes in to do any damage. Whereas the carrier is typically isolated because he doesn't want to be spotted close up, you know, with his teammates and be shot at by every ship on the enemy team. So he's usually further back outside of friendly AA range, which means he's vulnerable, especially since he's not tier 8 or higher and has a defensive fire. So this works um, for both uh, carrier lines, the Japanese and the American ones. Um, Except from the Saipan, but we can come back to that. 
in that you're increasing your capability to be self-reliant. The, the idea here is that if your fighters are dealing with bombers, or if your fighters are fighting his fighters and his bombers have broken through to attack you, you need to mitigate as much damage as possible coming into you. And this is why I pick these skills. I pick skills that mitigate incoming damage rather than taking skills that deal with after the damage has been done. If I can kill off a couple of planes because of my increased ability to shoot further, shoot harder, and, you know, incoming planes, and I, and I kill more of these planes off, that's bombs that don't drop, that's damage I don't take, that's great. That's my mentality behind this particular 19-point captain build. If we go back to the uh, ship calculator, or captain skills, we can see that this is the captain build here. This is a 19, this is what I call the standard anti-air uh, 19 point captain sort of spec. If you don't have a 19 point captain and you only have, let's say a 15 point captain, then you can take an advanced fire training because it realistically only adds about one kilometer range and you could just go with basic fire training and you could go with manual fire control for AA. That is another perfectly legitimate way of playing it if you don't have the 19 point captain. Other ways of playing it, it can shift as well because once you leave the the, the tier eights of say the Japanese carriers, there's some other uh, options that are open to you. And we'll show you here now is my um, Taiho, which is a tier nine and Hakuryu have a different build. In this particular instance, because of the three torpedo bombers that are on the thing, I'd actually want them to load quicker. Now you normally only play these ships in random. And I feel that I actually would like to have torpedo armament expertise which means I can't afford the advanced fire training. I still value the huge increase of the manual fire control for AA armament, and I value the basic fire training for all that AA, but I only have it five kilometers, I don't have it six kilometers, but that's okay. That leaves us four points in the 19 point captain. So we can take torpedo armament expertise, which means we get torpedo armament, armament expertise and basic fire training, and it leaves us one point. That one point, I then choose to go back to priority target, which is where we started this video at. Priority target is interesting because as the aircraft carrier, sometimes you are spotted by enemy planes, possibly enemy carrier planes. He's not going to bomb you, he just wants to show you up. He just wants to light you up to his team, and maybe you get shot at. Alternatively, uh, it could be that you are spotted and it's maybe it's a shore or whatnot. So you've got the situation awareness skill. What you really want to know with priority target and that makes it interesting is how many people are actively looking at you, are actively, not just they spot you, but they have you targeted in their guns and they're maybe going to shoot you. That is a better skill than say incoming fire alert because you're like, ah, oh, I'm an aircraft carrier and I'm spotted, that's bad. Ah, oh, I'm an aircraft carrier, I'm spotted and oh wow, that's five people looking at me. I need to, and then take appropriate action. Run away, turn now, stay nose on, find what's spotting you and stop it from spotting you, find smoke, find an island, do whatever it takes, but the priority target lets you know how serious the situation is depending on how many people are looking at you. I mean, it's a very important skill for cruisers, but it can also be really good for carriers. And if you've got one point left over since you took Tribune Armour and Expertise, then I would take priority target. But that is me, that's my personal preference. It's the same skill I use for the Hakuria because I feel the Japanese carriers are stealthy enough, so I also use the same build. On the Americans, it's a little bit different. On the Essex, well, I guess we'll talk about the Midway first. The Midway is so detectable that I prefer to take Concealment Expert, so I don't take the Advanced Fire Training, I move over to Concealment instead. Otherwise, it's the same setup, the, the same basic skills. I always take Aircraft Serving Expert, I always take Torpedo Acceleration, I always take Air Supremacy, I always take Dogfighting. The Torpedo Armament Expertise can shift, if necessary, to the Basic Fire Training. You could drop the basic fire training, but I like the ability of having the AA, and I don't feel the, the the loading time the torpedo bombers in this particular instance is as valuable as the 20% increase to AA defense, but your mileage may vary. You're entirely welcome to experiment and see how you get uh, you move along. However, I feel that the basic fire training and the manual fire control for AA armament, they synergize really well because you get plus 20% uh, damage from AA defense with base fire training. You get another 10% with a signal that you can put on the exterior, and then it doubles the manual fire control for AA armament. So that's pretty good. And even if manual fire control for AA armament didn't work that way and it only worked off the base AA, which I don't think it works that way, it's still a good skill. But this is the concealment variant that you can go with if you like. If you want to get closer or if you're a ship that can be seen from long range, then sure, you can go with this particular set. But again, this is another 19-point captain. On the Essex, 
Um, I'm going to, by the way, in the next video, I'm going to go in detail what captain scales to pick for what ships and what kind of ship setup. So we will go more in this detail in the following episode, but I'm just sort of giving you some uh, basic templates for um, skills. The Essex, I didn't take basic fire training. I took advanced fire training, but that's because it's a 15 point captain. I may take advanced fire training in the future. I didn't take manual fire control for eight armament because the, the, the guns larger than 85 millimeters are quite weak and I didn't feel like it was worth the points. And also the Saipan, if we look at it, which is the premium American carrier, doesn't have any guns larger than 85 millimeters. So I wanted a captain that could work really well with the Saipan, which is why instead I took the Torpedo Armour and Expertise so I could have quicker loading time with the Torpedo Bomb and the Essex, but also the Saipan. And manual fire control is useless on the Saipan, so we didn't take that. And with some extra points, I'll put it back into basic fire training. But ultimately, looking at the ship, looking at its specs what it does you can manipulate the captain around having stronger AA or weaker AA or working with the torpedo bombers or not working with the torpedo bombers because those are the ones you're damage dealers uh, but anyway that that is it if you don't intend to use torpedo bombers as i do in the lexington because i feel the lexington is kind of not a well balanced ship in that it doesn't have good plane kind of setup in this instance i play lexington fighters well if i don't have torpedo bombers then there's no point getting torpedo armor acceleration or torpedo armor expertise. So in that instance, I need to take a two-point skill. And if I don't take torpedo acceleration, I may as well take expert rear gunner. That's kind of a trade-off, I suppose. I have to pick at least something. And at least this does something for the two dive bombers. Then I take basic fire training, advanced fire training, air supremacy. And since it's a 15-point captain, with the remaining four points, if I wanted to go up to a 19-point captain, I have a choice between do I stick with the 15.2 kilometer detection range and do I reduce that with Concealment Expert, or do I dramatically increase the DPS output of the very substantial 127mm AA guns to make this thing an absolute nightmare of a trap of an, of an AA ship? It's up to you. Depends on your playstyle. Do you play closer? Do you play further away? Does the map allow you to get behind an island so that your AA field goes across the island and attack planes? Again, it's up to you. You can decide how you want to do that. But the basic thing is the same. You want to get aircraft serving an expert. You do want to get dogfighting and you want to get air supremacy. What AA you pick and how you affect the torpedo bombers or the rear gunners, that's up to you. So, once again, shipcamera.com forward slash Captain Calc. It's a very useful tool. You can play around with the skills. You do not want to pick evasive maneuvers evasive maneuvers is a bad skill you, you typically don't pick it because even though it looks like a carrier skill is quite bad the planes take a long time to come back it's fidgety to use it makes it very easy to be strafed uh, it's just it's a waste of a point when you can be picking other things like if you had a point left over and you'd already picked aircraft servicing expert and dogfighting then take priority target it has far more uses to know how you can mitigate incoming damage rather than just, you know, taking a crap skill. It's just, oh, it's just bad. And the two pointers, only torpedo acceleration is the real skill that I would take because me as an aircraft carrier player, I like to play with fighters and torpedo bombers. I value the torpedo acceleration in its ability to hit very maneuverable cruisers and destroyers. Again, it's also very useful for battleships, but it's not as obviously as good as against destroyers and cruisers, especially the very, very fast ones, like the French cruiser line that was released or fast Russian destroyers, you need the skill to hit them. One could argue that, oh, my skill level is so high that I don't need the skill. Well, if that's you, great. You go ahead, don't use superior acceleration, pick any of the other shitty two-point skills you want. If you want that to be expert rear gunner, that's fine. Just be aware that people usually strafe these days rather than just click on planes. But like most of us mere mortals, we're not that great. Torpedo acceleration is a huge benefit to hitting really irritating targets. So I recommend this skill. In the three bracket, it's a choice. Do you go with the torpedo, arm, uh, torpedo armament expertise to get faster torpedo bombers? Well, it depends. If the enemy has really heavy AA or you're going to using the ship in a scenario where there's a lot of AA on the enemy team, then having faster torpedo bombers just so they can fly out and die quicker might not be the right skill to pick. Having basic fire training is a very helpful self-defense thing, even at tier 8, you know, so, so you don't get killed. None of the other skills in the 3 bracket really work. And then the four bracket, you got to take air supremacy. It's very important that you have the extra fighter to kind of have uh, control of the skies or at least have parity with the enemy carrier so that you can sort of deal with him. Advanced fire training and manual fire control for AA armament. If you've got a very high point captain, these become viable skills to take. Uh, manual fire control for AA armament synergizes really well with basic fire training. Advanced fire training, however, synergizes really well with um, just boosting out the range 
of your lower tier guns, such as the, the mid tier guns, because they go on the Japanese ship, for example, from 3.1 kilometers, they go up to uh, 3.7 kilometers. And the defensive fire on ships, say, such as the Shikaku, they will go up. Um, they, the defensive fire range now triggers at 3.7 kilometers because the defensive fire doesn't trigger at 6 kilometers on the large range guns as it would in the cruisers, it's at the shorter range one. So advanced fire training has a benefit of just generally increasing the aura range of your AA, meaning the enemy planes take damage sooner, and also the defensive fire range is boosted as well. However, you don't get the benefit of the manual fire control for AA armament, but then again, maybe it's better to have more range or have the defensive fire panic sooner so that he can't fly in closer and get that torpedo drop off. You know, it's it sort of swings and roundabouts at how you want to approach this and what you want to do. Anyway, that is it for episode two. This is was the commander skills breakdown. We have looked very briefly uh, at the skills, uh, some captain uh, builds that you may be interested to, the tool on ship calculator um, from shipcomrade.com, which you are more than willing uh, should go to that website. It's a fantastic website. Check out their ship calculator or the captain calculator, I should say, to kind of. Do your own builds. You got any questions about certain skills or why I do things, or maybe you feel I haven't explained something, please do post it in the comments down below and I will reply to you. In the next episode, this is the end of episode two, in the next episode, which is episode three, um, maybe multiple parts because we're going to talk about ship and commander setups. So that is specifically what, for each ship, for the Hiryu, Shikaku, Taiho, that type of thing, what are my modules? You know, what are my consumables? What modules do I pick? Why do I pick them? What captain skills do I pick to go with particular ships? How do I min-max? How do I boost the efficiency of this ship? That's what we're going to talk about in the next episode, in episode three. We're going to talk about the flight control selection, the strengths, the weaknesses, that type of thing. That's the kind of the modules, that type of stuff. Uh, we'll talk about playstyles, uh, upgrades, ship exterior, camouflage signals, and then recommended captain carrier builds. Uh, so that is next episode. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.